Hello, nerds! Nerds for Yang. This is a video that only nerds could love. This is about math and the freedom dividend or uh, Andrew Yang's version of universal basic income. And what we're gonna do today is really go over the question of how in the world can any responsible person propose such a thing? It would clearly cost way too much money and will bankrupt the whole country. So today we're gonna go into how he pencils out these numbers and what you need to believe for these numbers to kind of uh, add up. Before we get into the specific calculations, I thought it might be helpful to just warm up with some context setting. So first number is the size of the US economy. The US economy is a $20 trillion economy. Whenever you think about how much a government program costs or a tax cut costs or any kind of investments costs, think about the context being that this whole economy is worth 20 trillion. The next number is the cost of the Iraq war was about 2.4 trillion, uh, according to the Congressional Budget Office. And the cost of the recent tax cuts under President Trump are estimated to cost about $2 trillion, uh, over the next 10 years. Here's an interesting number. If a family was earning $50,000 a year, under the Trump tax cuts, their highest uh, marginal income rate went from 25% to 22%. And if you just assume they were paying 25% on their entire income, which they weren't, so it's like a very generous calculation, they would have saved about three percentage points. So as an example, if a family were earning 50K a year and their marginal tax rate went down from 25% pre-Trump to 22% post-Trump, paying three percentage points less, which comes out to about $1,500 a year or $125 a month. So under the Trump tax cuts, which costs $2 trillion for a family earning $50K, uh, that, that saved them $125 a month. Okay, so what about this freedom dividend? Well, that's $1,000 per month per U.S. citizen adult. So in the case of the family earning 50k a year, if it was a one person family, instead of $125 a month, it would be a thousand. And in a case of a couple, then it would be $2,000 a month. So quite a bit more than uh, any any gains under under the tra Trump tax cut, and frankly, any other tax cut, at least for the working class people. Let's say if you're really wealthy and you're making a million dollars a year, then you would have saved $2,000 a month under the Trump tax, uh, tax cuts. So, and certainly if you were making 10 million a year, then you're, you're probably saving 20,000 a month. So if you're making like less than 10 million a year, the freedom dividend would be a better deal for you. But if you're making more than 10 million a year, freedom dividends like not nearly as beneficial as the uh, reduction of income taxes. But that's not really the question. We're not talking about what's better for the working class person or the middle class person. The question is like, well, how, how do we actually pay for this? Because this would, the, the exact reason why it would be good for a lot of people is why a lot of uh, conservatives, fiscal conservatives reasonably ask, wait a minute, like if it's gonna be so good, nothing, nothing, Nothing's free in life, right? So um, I found this interview where uh, Yang is being uh, asked that specific question. And uh, this was an interview with the uh, Carnegie Council for Ethics in International Affairs, so one of these kind of nonprofits. And he kind of goes into great detail. And uh, so what I did was I took his answer and I just kind of made a chart because this is the Nerds for Yang channel. So let's take a look at this chart. What you start out with is the headline cost, which he calls the headline cost, which is $2 trillion a year. 
So the same cost of uh, the Iraq war, but it would be every year that you pay out this dividend. And the same cost for uh, as the Trump tax cuts, but that was over 10 years. So this is another way to think about it. This is 10 times more expensive than the Trump tax cuts. Let's be real. So you're, you're immediately like, whoa, how in the world are we going to pay $2 trillion a year, even though the economy is a $20 trillion economy? Well, the first thing you got to remember is that the way this program is being proposed, if you are on a welfare program or a government assistance program, it's a choice. So you don't get both, uh, you know, let's say income assistance or housing assistance or food assistance and the freedom dividend, you, you, you can pick. And so obviously if someone's getting more than $1,000 a month in assistance from the government, then they, uh, they will not elect to take the dividend. Um, and that right away saves you $500 billion a year right off the top. So now the cost of the program goes from $2 trillion to $1.5 trillion because it's not going to every uh, U.S. citizen because there's a lot of U.S. citizens that are getting more than $1,000 in assistance uh, per month. Still, you got $1.5 trillion to go. So the next thing, and this is probably the biggest one, is the value-added tax. So Yang's argument is it's kind of like a national sales tax, but it's a little bit different in that it is a tax on every step of the production process. And the reason why most developed countries use this, very wealthy ones like Germany, Switzerland, Australia, like every, almost every other country has a VAT. America is the only one that doesn't. And the reason why a lot of countries like it is it's very hard for companies to avoid paying taxes. Amazon in 2018 had sales of 270 billion. 270 billion in sales. In terms of corporate federal income tax in 2018, paid zero. Right? So if you had a VAT, you know, 27 billion of that 270 billion uh, would likely have been collected by the federal government. Uh, now, a lot of people will say like, well, hold on a second, that's not fair because prices of things will go up, you know, roughly around 10% and that's unfair to poor people, which is true if you didn't have the freedom dividend. If you're just saying, oh, there's a new VAT, no dividend. Well, yeah, that's going to bring in a lot of revenue for the government, but people in lower income are going to pay a higher percentage of their of their income in taxes. But because everyone's getting a thousand dollars a month, you'd have to be buying, like, spending more than ten thousand uh, dollars a month on you know products and and services uh, for for you to be worse off now. If you are spending more than $10,000 a month and you're spending like $30,000, $40,000 a month and you're buying like jewelry and new cars and boats and, you know, uh, going to the spa all the time and, and fancy restaurants, like, yeah, you know, the VAT is going gonna, is gonna to make you pay more. And that, but on the other hand, like you're in control. You don't have to buy all that stuff if you don't want to. So at any rate, the VAT, he estimates, will bring in $800 billion. So now we're down to a cost of about 700 billion. So we started with 2 trillion. We knocked it down to 1.5 trillion because uh, 500 billion, you're not going to pay out to people who already get uh, federal assistance. And then now we knocked it down from 1.5 trillion to 700 tri uh, billion because we're going to raise 800 billion from the VAT. And so, but then you still have 700 billion left over. Now, his argument is, well, because we're going to inject $1.5 billion into everybody's pockets, they're going to mostly spend that money. And that money that they spend uh, will get taxed by the VAT, the value added tax. So some of that will come back. Uh, and there will also be like this economic growth. So 
imagine in your town if everybody had an extra thousand dollars like i bet the restaurants movie theater nail salon the the little sort of gift shops uh, would all have a way lot more business uh, in terms of a lot more um, economic activity and, and that would go into the economy and come right back. That would bring you another, he estimates, 500 billion in revenue. So now you're down from 700 billion to 200 billion. And then the last 200 billion, he thinks you're going to get back by reduced healthcare costs, reduce incarceration, reduce homelessness. And he also talks about increased productivity, um, increased sort of mental health, and all of these things are worth, worth a couple hundred billion. And so that's how you get to zero. So if anybody ever asks you, oh, you know, I heard about this Andrew Yang guy, like that freedom dividend sounds good, but you know, Classic example of a bleeding heart, uh, liberal. Well, it turns out um, there is an argument. The, the numbers can pencil out. I think to keep it real, the biggest assumptions are probably around that 500 billion in new tax revenue from economic growth. You know, I bet we would make more money in tax revenue from economic growth. I don't know if the 500 billion, like, it's a lot of growth. And then, of course, at the end, like there's all these kind of savings from, you know, reduced health care. I think his argument is, well, if people have more money, they're able to afford more health care or better health care or, or more healthy foods or they can go to the gym and then they're less likely to get diabetes. And that's very expensive. You know, I think there's probably an argument there that certainly doesn't pencil out, you know, right away. That's more of a long term savings. But it's not crazy. It's not crazy. So um, most of all, I just like the idea because it's probably the only thing that I've heard a candidate talk about that will really help working class people. Like free college, yeah, that's great. Not everybody wants to go to college. It's not a fit for everybody. And even if they do go to college, like they still are going to need to um, pay their bills uh, after they graduate. Green New Deal, yeah, some people will get jobs from that. Not everyone. And cutting more taxes and dereg more, more regulations. You know, if you're not making any money, cutting income taxes more is not going to really make a difference. So net-net, free net, 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 not too crazy. Not too crazy. If I were a betting man, I would probably say that if Yang made it across the line and introduce the freedom dividend. I don't know if we would want to go for a thousand dollars a month. Like, I think that number makes sense. Um, it's a nice even number. It's, it probably gets you like above the poverty line for a lot of people. But, uh, you know, since it's such a, uh, revolutionary program, I would probably prefer we start at maybe a thousand dollars per household or $500 per citizen. But, um, that doesn't have as much nice of a ring to it. So I hope this was helpful. If you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe and share and comment. Let me know what you guys think about this idea and do you think the math is reasonable? You know, or do you think it's like completely out there or do you think it's like plausible enough? I mean, another way to think about it is how many other candidates have walked through their math? I don't think there's a lot that have as much as Yang. So even though his math is kind of optimistic in some places. At least he kind of takes the time to walk you through it. So we'll see you next week. And uh, thanks for everybody subscribing to the channel who already has. Uh, it's really encouraging to see so much interest in these videos. And um, I'll keep making them if people keep, um, you know, liking and sharing and, and subscribing to the channel. Um, and hopefully, uh, Andrew will have a great next week. Keep it real.